Welcome to Cambridge, where this study was undertaken. We've been looking at Parkinson's disease, which, although it's most well known as a disorder of movement, with tremor and slowness, also causes changes in cognition and thinking. And these can be disabling and distressing, but also carry with it a significant adverse prognosis. Not only does Parkinson's disease affect cognition and decision-making and impulsivity, but these features of the disease are not well treated by current dopaminergic strategies. So current treatments may not improve and in some cases may worsen the severity of symptoms. One of the reasons for this is that there's more to Parkinson's disease than the dopaminergic deficit that will be most familiar to you. Parkinson's disease causes early and severe de deficits in the noradrenergic system from degeneration of the locus ceruleus in the brainstem. To target cognition and behaviour in Parkinson's disease, we focused on the locus ceruleus noradrenergic system. The system is profoundly affected in Parkinson's from even the earlier stages before we see the classic motor symptoms emerge. The locus ceruleus is a small nucleus nestled deep in the brainstem. It only measures about 14 millimetres long, but despite its small size, it has this really widespread projection system which allows noradrenaline to be released and to modulate the responsivity or the gain of neurons in all of these target regions. Depleted levels of noradrenaline in Parkinson's contribute to some of the cognitive symptoms that we see in the disease and also some of the behavioural symptoms like loss of motivation or apathy or impulsivity. Yet none of the drugs that we routinely give people in Parkinson's target the noradrenergic system. Fortunately, there are drugs approved for other conditions that we're able to repurpose to use in Parkinson's to test if they might help some of these symptoms. One of these such drugs is adamoxetine. Adamoxetine is a noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor, which means that once noradrenaline is released into the synapse, adamoxetine blocks its reuptake, resulting in increased levels of noradrenaline availability. We know from previous work that atomoxetine can help cognitive and behavioural symptoms in Parkinson's disease, but it doesn't work for everybody. In order to progress noradrenergic therapies in Parkinson's, we need to be better able to predict who these therapies might work best for. Our goal in this study was to use neuromelanin sensitive imaging in order to measure the integrity of the locus ceruleus noradrenergic system in people with Parkinson's to see if this might help predict who will respond best to atomoxetine. Neuromelanin is a pigmented, insoluble molecule that accumulates within the locus ceruleus across the lifespan. In Parkinson's, we see a decline in neuromelanin levels as cells degenerate in that region. Using specialised neuroimaging sequences, we're now able to pick up on the contrast that neuromelanin produces, allowing us to quantify the integrity of the locus ceruleus in vivo. In this study, we tested the hypothesis that the benefit of atomoxetine on behavioural symptoms in Parkinson's disease would depend on individual differences in locus ceruleus integrity. We predicted that individuals with a more degenerate locus ceruleus would show a greater improvement in behaviour on atomoxetine versus placebo. In particular, we examined the effects of atomoxetine on response inhibition, which is known to be impaired in Parkinson's disease and has been extensively linked with the locus ceruleus noradrenaline system. We used the stop signal task paradigm to measure response inhibition. This task requires participants to make rapid responses following the presentation of the GO stimulus, a black arrow. Occasionally, the arrow changes to a red color and a beep tone, the stop signal, is presented, which indicates that participants should try to withhold or inhibit their prepotent response. By manipulating the delay between presentation of the initial GO stimulus and the stop signal, over the course of the experiment, we can infer the time needed to inhibit the GO response, which is referred to as the stop signal reaction time. 19 individuals with Parkinson's disease first underwent ultra-high field 7 Tesla MRI to estimate the locus ceruleus integrity. Each participant then completed two testing sessions, where they were either given 40 mg atomoxetine or placebo in a double-blind manner, and they then completed the stop signal task. When averaging across the participants with Parkinson's disease, there was no difference between the atomoxetine and placebo conditions in terms of the stop signal reaction time. However, we predicted that the benefit of atomoxetine would depend on the locus ceruleus integrity. 
When we plot the effect of atomoxetine on the stop signal reaction time relative to placebo as a function of locus ceruleus integrity, we find a very clear relationship. This suggests that atomoxetine improved the stop signal reaction times specifically in those individuals with reduced locus ceruleus integrity. The success of the study has drawn on many individuals with expertise in cognitive neuroscience, psychopharmacology, ultra high field 7 Tesla MRI and this analysis, and clinical aspects of Parkinson's disease. But for us, it's been worth this effort, and the success of the collaboration has clearly opened up new avenues for potential treatment of people affected by Parkinson's disease. Indeed, one thing we take away from the study is that not every person with the illness responds similarly to the drug. And this points the way towards and highlights the need for precision medicine with individualised treatment responses targeting those who are most likely to benefit. This approach has already been taken forward into early phase clinical trials and we look forward to being able to share the results of that with you in the near future. Thank you for listening.